welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and today I am here with my weekly whip and chat. So if you're new and not sure what that means, whip stands for work in progress, and chat is pretty self-explanatory. It just means we're going to be spending some time today chatting, catching up, uh, and whatnot. And I suppose I should say technically today is going to be a kit up and chat where I'm going to be kitting up um, a project that I'm going to be adding into my whip rotation. And I say that like I have a lot of whips. I don't. I typically have two, maybe three tops, but uh, a new whip. <laughs> that's just what I'll say. So um, feel free to pull out a project to work alongside me, whether that's diamond painting or treating this like a podcast, whatever works for you. I am just, as always, looking forward to kicking off the week by catching up with you. So I hope you're doing really well. Um, it's currently Sunday evening and I am looking forward to getting another project kitted up with you. What I'm going to be working on is, um, well, kitting up rather, is Midnight Manakineko. And this is by Jeremiah Kettner and is one of Diamond Art Club's, um, I believe, it started out as an Amazon exclusive, but you might be able to get this on the Diamond Art Club website now. I'll have it linked below wherever I can find it. <laughs> and you could take a look if you want. It's one of their like really snack size beginner friendly kits. It's in this nice cute little box. It's uh, 13 by 16 inches or 32.8 by 40.9 centimeters. Um, and there's a couple of reasons I wanted to start working on this kit. So I have been uh, working on and having way too much fun <laughs> working on my cross stitch conversion project. I worked on it with you guys in the past couple of whip and chats, I think. And um, I finished, I actually finished that fifth panel uh, a few days ago. So um, I initially thought that right away I wanted to go ahead and get into a little bit of a break kind of project where I thought, oh, maybe I'll work on something with round drills that's smaller, maybe have some color blocking and whatnot in it. And I had, um, I'd even narrowed it down to a few potential kits that I thought would work. And then when it came down to it, I thought, you know what? I'm really just really wanting to go ahead and start the sixth panel my cross stitch conversion project, which is exactly what I did. And I'm so happy <laughs> that I did. Um, I'm not terribly far into it, uh, but it's 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 been a lot of fun. I'm gonna see if maybe I could do a cross stitch conversion project update with you guys here soon you know just do a video to check in because it has been it has been a minute it is <laughs> i don't even know it's been months i think since i did an update on that on that project so we'll, we'll get to one of those soon here's this adorable kit there is so much color blocking and it's just the cutest thing ever i know a lot of people have worked on this kit uh, already and that's completely fine it's really what made me think oh i think i need to work on this one soon so um it'll just be a nice round drill breather of a kit that i can work on here when i because i think i'm probably gonna be itching for a break from my cross stitch conversion project here at some point relatively soon so I want to have this kitted up and ready to go. My other motivation, to be quite honest with you, is that I have these that I want to test out. So they're, I'm sure that many of you have already seen these reviewed, shown, tested on you know YouTube or Instagram. There are a lot of my fellow creators and diamond painting friends that have used and tested these. Um, but Cat Eared is the owner, is the like shop that makes these. Uh, and they reached out to me and asked if they could send some to me for me to try out. And I thought, sure, why not? I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. So they're called Trobrix. And what they are, this they said is their, one of their recent versions that has this purple lid. I don't know if this is the kind that minimizes static. We'll find out. Um, they did not tell me. They said I did not have to make a video, but they love if I had any feedback to share with them. So I thought, you know, I, I'll test them out. Let's kit them up. <laughs> and why not? Even though they said I didn't have to. So they have these lids that are hinged. And it feels like they do snap really securely. They said that's something that they really pride themselves on. And they were asked me like, oh, could you test these? They said outdoors. I think maybe they meant more traveling than anything because I don't diamond paint outdoors, in the, especially not in the summer. But uh, these feel like they would be pretty secure. I feel like you could almost go ahead and just leave them in here and transport them in this box. And that would also keep it very secure. This came as a set of 10. I think that there are multiple sizes that are available. 
I don't know if these are the larger or the smaller size, um, but what I'm gonna do is because they just sent me a set of 10, not to, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful, that sounded weird. They Because what they sent me, they sent me 10, um, I didn't have any kits with 10 colors or less that I really wanted to work on. So I thought, you know what, that's fine. For a smaller scale project like this cutie, I will just, I'll have some diamonds in here and then I'll put the rest in, um, this is like a half size uh, Elizabeth Ward style container. It's not Elizabeth Ward brand. I think it's the off brand uh, from AliExpress. I don't even know who the parent, you know, brand like who who came up with these very very first. But uh, they're everywhere under various you know iterations and names. Uh, there's even like a version that's at uh, Joann's that's under like the Hildy and Joe name. I think Michael's carried it at one point on some other name. So anyway, this is like the uh, half size of the tray. I am obsessed with these. My friend Raxify is the one who uh, shared about these and really got me kind of hooked on them. I love them for smaller size projects. They come in a, and this, I bought this, this is not sponsored, but um, I I bought these off AliExpress. I don't remember what the price point was. It was really cheap, $14, $14 US, not included the shipping. Um, and there was a set that came with a variety of sizes like this one. And then there was also a set where you could get all small sizes instead. So this, I just feel like is even, you know, more travel friendly than the big ones. But um, that being said, I'm intrigued by the concept of these and sort of the, you just, you dump the whole color in there and then when you're done, you just close it up and continue on. If you have watched my channel for a little bit, it, I mean, I'm sure you've heard me say that I don't kit up into trays. I don't have a tray tower. It's not practical for me in terms of both space and the fact that I have small destructive children. Well, I have small children, one of whom is particularly, uh, he's just kind of a bull in a china shop. I love him to death, but, I just would never put a tray tower out and I don't have a craft room. Um, I have a small desk in you know, our kind of living area where I kind of house my, a lot of my uh, diamond painting stuff that I'm actively working with. Um, but I also have cats. Like it's just a tray tower is, it's not for me. Um, but this is different from a tray tower. Like these are, you know, ones with lids and everything that are really secure. I really feel like I would more, be most likely to use these for traveling. Um, and then I wouldn't have to travel with a tray, I guess. So I don't know. We'll take a look and see. So I'm going to, what I'll probably try to do is maybe pick out some colors that have a smaller amount in them. Um, maybe we'll try a couple of different kind of color amounts to see what, how they behave in those storage containers. And yeah. So, um, hi, how are you doing today, by the way? I don't think I started off by asking you. I'm so sorry. It was very rude of me. Um, I hope that you had a really nice weekend and that your week is off to a really nice start so far. Um, we had a good weekend. It was, it's hot. It's just, it's so hot. Um, if you saw my month in review video this past week and you saw my temperature dragon project, notice how all the colors in there, most of them we haven't even really seen before in that project. It's, it's because it's just so freaking hot. It's so hot. Um, yeah, so, and this week is just not letting up. Today was a high of 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just, I don't, I don't want to move. I don't want to do anything except whine about the heat. And you guys are probably well and truly, <laughs> well and truly tired of it. But um, we, yeah, we spent a lot of time in the pool. We spent a lot of time just inside staying cool and just seeking out the ac I, I hope that wherever you are that it is a bit cooler than it is here for sure um my mom is in town we're having a fantastic visit so far she's doing a lot of diamond painting alongside me and we'll chat more about that later too but diamond painting wise like i said i had finished up my uh, cross stitch conversion project the the fifth panel and i'm so excited that i had that done the last couple of rows on that one were not super fun um, because they just, it was mostly um, like greenery, like ivy and castle walls. And that just translated to a lot of confetti that wasn't, you know, it wasn't as, as fun to work on because I didn't feel like I was having this really fun parts of the image revealed to me as I went. It just felt like here's a, a bunch of confetti and maybe once you step back, you'll see. You'll see what this is supposed to be. Um, okay, so like I said, I think what I'm gonna try to do, let's try out some different amounts of drills, some different kinds of drills, and get really a good sense for what's gonna work uh, well in these containers. So I'm gonna start out with some ABs. 
this is a light blue AB. Let's see how the ABs do in these trays. Um, and I will share my thoughts too, as far as like what it's like working with these, which obviously I haven't done yet. And I don't, I don't know that I'm gonna get this kitted up in time for us to get really started. I mean, if there's no static, I will. <laughs> I don't know how this kitted up quickly enough that we'll actually get to start on it in this, uh, in this video. But okay, so there they are. I'm not seeing a ton of static. Oh, there's a little static in there. Um, so when I pop this open, okay, well they line up nicely. Um, I'm curious, I don't normally work with trays that have a clear uh, bottom like this. So I'm curious to see if, do they, I know that they've been really receptive to, be, to feedback and updating and changing the features of these trays. So I'm curious if that's something that they have looked at. I could take a piece of release paper and attach it to here to make it you know, opaque, but I don't know. Um, as far as pouring these out, literally I was showing these to my mom earlier and she was like, but how do you pour the diamonds out? And I was like, I think the idea is that they're just staying in here until you're ready to uh, just be done with your project and, de uh, and kit down. And then I think you just have to pour them out the corner. Um, there is no, oops, <laughs> otherwise no spout, but I mean, no, that's, that's pretty sturdy. So, and I'm not seeing static. Really, I mean, there's a tiny bit, but okay. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna pop this on the end. This would look nice, like in a tray tower, just sort of stacked up all together, but huh. Okay, um, what was I talking about? I don't remember, oh, my conversion project. And then, yeah, I just was kind of amused in spite of myself that uh, <laughs> I thought, okay, let's go ahead. I'm sure I'm gonna be burned out. Let me go ahead and uh, move on to work on something else. And instead it was like, what happened was I started refilling my um, uh, my my containers that I used for my cross stitch conversion project because I wanted to fit all the containers into just two large Elizabeth Ward trays and that meant that I couldn't actually fit all the drills for every single color in there and so basically I have to restock them intermittently um, from just like this big bag of uh, bags of drills. <laughs> And so I was going through and I was going ahead and doing like a little restock of those. And I just thought, you know what? I really, I really just want to work on the next panel of this project. And so uh, that's what I did. Um, and it's going, it's going well. Um, I know that this month for my dragon project, I would really like to work on, let's try this just tiny amount of diamonds in here. I'd really like to work on the kit Universe in a Jar by Randall Spangler. That one has square drills and I had thought, well, let me, let me work on a round drill kit in between my cross stitch conversion project and um, this one. And that's why I was, you know, I had narrowed it down to, you know, three or four round drill kits to potentially work on. Um, but then no, the conversion project just, just stole my name back. Okay, so this is just a small amount of drills. And I mean, they line up fine. Um, the way that I, so here's what I typically do. This is, I'm, I'm, it's a little unwieldy for me. I'm kind of trying to get used to it from how I normally shake my trays. Because typically what I'll do is I will, I actually usually hold it in this hand, but if I do that, the lid wants to flop around. Um, but it's like, how I would do it is I would normally just kind of shake it and then kind of go it down to this end and then multi-place from there. When I have this view of drills, I won't be able to do that because I can't get to that side. So I wonder if, wait, what if I did this? What if I did this? If I did it this way, then here I can pick out a here and then I just would, I think, have to flip it because then I can't pick up with a pen. I don't know. You guys, I think what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to work with these and just get some hands-on uh, practical experience with it. And then I'll be able to tell you <laughs> what I think. But for right now, I think that I, my perspective, my feedback is going to be really limited. So I'll tell you with that grain of salt. So um, yeah, I, I have some other things that I want to kind of test. I actually, I was anticipating that I would have some static, like there is actually a little bit of static in there. Maybe I will be able to test that. Um, I'm seeing, I've seen a few people post about using, oh yeah, let's try it. Okay. Using um, a ball of foil to, to get rid of static and okay. I literally brought my roll of foil from my kitchen over here. Um, I want to try a little foil ball and see 
if this works because I'm intrigued. Hopefully this doesn't sound horrifically loud on camera. Okay, because I will, I'll try anything. Uh, static is the bane of my existence. I hate it. I don't like it here. <laughs> There's static. So I'm intrigued by the concept of, oh, a foil ball will get rid of static. So what happens if we drop it in there? I don't know if this is really the ideal conditions to try to use foil to get rid of static, but... I mean, let's, okay, let's see what happens. Well, I mean, okay. Uh, well, I guess color me kind of sold. I see some static in there, but normally if I were shaking it up like this, all the static that had been in there, these drills would be clinging like crazy. So I see some static, but that neutralized that way better than I expected. Okay, tell me, have you guys tried the foil trick for static? Because if I can add that into the mix, you know, for those of you that don't have dryer sheets or don't use dryer sheets, because literally the only reason I have dryer sheets is to use in my diamond painting kits that have static. Um, it'd be interesting if I could just switch to foil. I do still see some static in there for sure. You can see the drills kind of clinging, um, but I don't know, why foil? One of you guys that has like knowledge about science, you can tell me why that works or I could just go Google it. Um, yeah, so I am surprised that I have been, you know, continuing to want to work on my cross stitch conversion project because historically that kit has been a source of uh, burnout and some frustration for me. So um, I am glad that I just have enjoyed working on the, <laughs> that I enjoyed working on the fifth panel so much that I thought, oh sure, let me go ahead and start on the next one. And for me, I, I've talked about it kind of ad nauseum here that I am such a mood and mindset diamond painter. Um, I have to really feel like I am in the mood and excited about and in the right mindset to work on a particular diamond painting piece. If I try to force myself to work on something for other reasons, like because I feel like I have to, or okay, that foil didn't work nearly as well. We do this instead, do the like uh, fog up the glass breath. Hold on a second. There we go. Much better. That's my, that's like my favorite go-to trick because it doesn't require me to get anything else out, but it doesn't really combat static that's already, that's um, in there very well. Mm, see, in this case, okay, that foil ball isn't doing much of anything. I see a lot of static. So let me grab a dryer sheet. And we'll just pop a square of that in there instead. So your mileage may vary on the foil balls, apparently. Does it need to be bigger, maybe? I don't know. That crumpled it up wrong. Put that in there. Yeah, much better. Oh, the joys of diamond painting and static. So, um, by the way, today, the day that I'm filming this, Sunday, I got a little notification from YouTube studio that was like, happy birthday to your channel. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had forgotten. My channel as of today is four years old. That's when I started my YouTube channel was four years ago today. Yes, we were right in the midst of the, you know what? <laughs> and uh, I just, I started it on a whim and for the first few months, I was maybe putting up a video a month. It was really not frequently at all. Oh, look at me just spilling drills everywhere. And like there was one point early on where it wasn't like I had, you know, set out hoping to, you know, grow a ton and have like all this success and everything. And then I was disappointed and decided to let it go. It was more of a, I had started it. I had done a couple of videos. And I was just kind of like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is really for me, if I'm like a good fit for this, you know, platform. And I don't know how much I'm really enjoying it. And I don't really know how that turned around exactly, but it did. And four years later, here we are. So <laughs> I know some of you have been here since the beginning. Feel free to sound off in the comments if you have been here since just even fall of 2020. Um, it's been a ride. It has been a ride. And I really, I never set out 
for for what I have now, and I I know that it could basically be gone in in an instant. You know, is because people's people's feelings change. The YouTube algorithm can do its thing, or maybe diamond painting as a whole is just not going to be as popular. But I just am very 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 thankful for what I have and um, how much I've just enjoyed really building what we have here. So thank you for being a part of that. And um, yeah, so I don't have any big like giveaways planned or anything. I'm sorry. I'm not exactly in like the position to be able to do so right now, but maybe, maybe in the future, maybe like a belated thing. I can't, I can't promise it though, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, keep going. But yeah, so happy fourth birthday to my channel. And thank you guys again. Um, I have been, Summer of the Masters is officially over and Anthony and I single and placing and I need to go ahead and film and post our big wrap up videos, announce our winners and call it you know, a finish and everything for Summer of the Masters this year. Always bittersweet for that to be over and my mind admittedly has already shifted into drills and chills mode. This month is gonna be a lot of prep and everything, getting ready for drills and chills 2024 to kick off on September 1st. And I'm excited. <laughs> I love Drills and Chills and All Things Fall and Halloween. I loved, loved, loved doing that um, uh, Make Market Halloween haul with you guys uh, yesterday. And oh my gosh, so, so, so much fun. I love that I got there early enough that I was able to, early enough in the season that I was able to kind of get a good selection of what they did have in the store. And I feel like it's even better than last year. So I'm hoping that you know, Michaels has been selling enough of the make market kits to make it worth it for them to keep stocking them. So fingers crossed. Um, I'm not sure what kits I want to work on this month because this month is kind of that, I call it like a bi month um, where I'm in between events. I like to participate in ABs in August, which my some friends of mine host on over on Instagram and it's been going on for a few years. But I, um, this is a little bit bigger amount. Let's put this one in the Trobricks. Um but that's like really easy to have a kit that qualifies for. Um, how many special drills does it have to have? I can't remember. But I basically can follow my nose as far as kits I wanna work on. And then once we get into September, October, I just, I'm really ready to work on all the fall and Halloween kits. I try to do kind of fall kits and see that'll work really well. Um, oops. I like to do fall kits in September and Halloween kits in October, but I haven't really settled on what kits I want to work on this year. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm really excited for drills and chills. I hope you guys are too, if you're joining in. Um, and I also am loving how, okay, has anyone else noticed? I'm sure you, a lot of you have, but how many Hades and Persephone themed diamond painting kits we're getting from Diamond Art Club lately? I'm so here for it. I, I literally could go and just do a stash video of just my Hades and Persephone kits that I have from various companies or ones that I've completed. That Those drills just went everywhere too. Good grief. Um, but I, I I watched this really interesting video that YouTube pushed to me and I'm sure, you know, those you know cookies they grabbed from <laughs> me being on like other sites about Hades and Persephone and diamond painting kits and stuff. But I got this video pushed to me by um, the creators Princess Weeks week is I think it's just weeks that was talking about like why do we love uh the stories of Persephone so much it was such a good watch I'll try to remember to link it in um the description below if you like kind of video commentary type videos um and I just like yeah no this is all <laughs> this is all true uh, this is the biggest bag of drills that we have I don't well this one is kind of big too so maybe this one's the biggest. I wonder how well these are going to fit in the Trobricks. I'm going to try. I have a feeling it's going to kind of be too much and be a little more unwieldy, but I'm curious. I really want to, I want to see. Um, but yeah, I know some people are probably like, oh, this is getting so old. But no, I love the lore of Hades and Persephone so much. It got me kind of revisiting. Oh, that's going to be, yeah, that's not going to be very practical. Um that big amount but again I kind of want to just test it for you guys anyway so I'm gonna leave it we'll see what happens um it made me want to like go see Hades Town again we were lucky enough to get to go see it oh was that earlier this year or was that last year I can't remember but I saw that it's coming back to just a different theater in in Southern California uh in a few months and I'm like well 
maybe if Adam has a job by then, maybe we could go because I would really enjoy seeing it again. Um, maybe if, especially if there were a different cast, that would be really interesting to me. Um, so yeah, lots of fun stuff going on in the diamond painting world, like fun new releases and shops doing really fun things. And I'm, we're working with some shops to come up with some like uh, on theme accessories and stuff for drills and chills. So hopefully it's going to be it's gonna be a fun season. <laughs> I wanted to hop over to the diamond painting tag that I've been working on on and off. Or, well, not on and off. I uh, shared my answers to some of the questions with you guys the past few weeks, I believe. Um, and so I think we're gonna get to the end of these questions today. And so yeah, I thought I could go through the rest of these with you guys now. So um, this is a diamond painting tag that Michaela put out. Uh, I'll link to her video where she has the tag questions listed in her. Um, in the description of this video so you can just read them off really easily so thanks to Michaela for putting these together I always enjoy uh, hearing what my other creators responses to these are and hearing what your guys is oh, reading I suppose what your responses are to it so feel free to answer like play along and answer along in the comments if you like to any and all questions that uh, catch your fancy I have to cut up some more dryer sheet so I'm gonna do that while I answer um, the first question that we have to get to today which is I oh did I answer this one last week I can't remember I'm sorry if you're having deja vu I don't remember if I answered this question last week or not so this is question number 21 and the question is squares or rounds um and for me I at one point my stash according to gems flow I had the same exact number of squares and rounds like kits in my stash um, and that has since changed and now I feel like it's primarily squares, but I think that has, that's more incidental than anything. So for example, um, Diamond Art Club, I feel like has been releasing more square drill kits. And when I buy from Jaded Gem Shop, which is a shop that I also have a lot of kits from, I typically am getting them in the square drill iteration because you can get either drill shape with, with hers. So, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that I prefer squares that much more over rounds. In fact, I really, um... I get frustrated if I don't have both options available to me or if I feel like forced to work on a particular drill shape. That's why you'll see me doing things like when I, you know, finished up my cross stitch conversion panel going, now I really need a round drill kit in my life because I've just been working on this confetti heavy square drill kit. So um, I'm not trying to like take a cop out answer here or anything whatsoever. It's more of a, no, just genuinely, I need I need both uh, drill shapes in my life for various reasons. Now, I do have preferences in terms of um, artists and genres of artwork that I prefer in uh, either drill shape. So for example, uh, I've talked about here before how old masters genre artwork, I vastly prefer to work on those kits with square drills. I really like the finished effect of square drills. Um, by the way, if you were interested, I did a comparison video. Um, I think it would be around a year ago now when Diamond Art Club briefly tested out offering their kits in both drill shapes. Um, they since decided to not do that. I think it wasn't feasible like from a financial standpoint like the logistics and everything that went into it it just so they decided not to continue doing that but when they did I ended up completing um the first kit that they had in both drill shapes I completed it in both drill shapes and did comparisons along the way including talking about differences I noticed and kind of the finished effect like how it looked because with round drills you get to see some of the canvas behind the diamonds um and you know square drills technically would take longer to work on and I even timed it and and whatnot it was very like quasi-scientific like as close to a scientific method as I could make it it was a lot of fun but I did a video on that specifically and I'll have that linked below if you are are interested to see just sort of my in-depth thoughts on squares versus rounds um but then there's some artists who I think that the look of rounds can really suit them well um like I like the way that Mrs. Butter D's work looks with round drills and some of the like watercolor artists like uh, Margaret Morales looks really good with round drills they still look good with square drills too but there's like just a subtlety to it that's different that it's like well all things being equal I kind of like the way that this tends to look so um yeah so I have preferences but I, I really I really do need both drill shapes in my life 
And I feel like I even noticed, like I feel that most of my stash is square drills right now. And I, f I wish that I had more rounds to choose from in it because when it's like, okay, it's time now for me to take, I want to take a little break from, from squares. I feel like I don't have as much selection as many kids to choose from that have round drills. It feels like my options are limited in a way. So I don't know. Um, that's my question to that squares versus rounds. The next question is, um, question 22 is what is your favorite method for placing AB drills? Uh, putty that is not fresh, not fresh putty. So basically, um, what I mean by fresh putty is just, you've just loaded it into your pen. And so it's really clean. <laughs> um, so either, either putty that is like a little bit dirtied up, like, you know, you've, so an easy way to sort of dirty up your putty is to tap it like on, if you're wearing jeans or tap it on like a washcloth. So it's getting a little bit of like dust and fibers on it. Um, these had static in them. How does the tray handle the static? Just fine. Those are lining up really nicely, you guys. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't know how I feel about the the lid basically blocking off the the left like half centimeter of the tray, but we'll see what it's like to actually work with them. Um, what was I saying? Favorite method? Oh, or if I'm single placing, well, sometimes I will single place with a multi placer. I'll pick up the ABs with my multi-placer that has putty in it. And um, that will work. Or if I wanna try to use wax, wax is more fickle. Uh, so, and I use wax in my single placer, putty in my multi-placer. So if it's wax, I will make sure that's pretty dirty too. Um, otherwise it doesn't wanna come off my pen or I risk like yanking the AB coating off, which doesn't happen to me very often, but it can happen. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I approach it. Let me know what you guys do though with ABs if you have a method. I know some people will just, when it comes to ABs, they'll just place with tweezers because they can't get it to work with their wax or putty period, which I can completely understand. In a pinch, I'll do that too. But I don't like picking up round drills with tweezers. I feel like it's more, more fickle. Um... Let's see, I'll do this one in here. Uh, question number 23, what is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? Give me washi tape all day, every day, and I will grab a tape measure. I will uh, have looked at what the exact size in, that the, of the canvas is that I'm working on, and I will have grabbed my calculator and done the math to figure out how to make the same size sections over, over the whole canvas. And um, I just, I really like to do it that way. I like that I can kind of customize it to, if the canvas has a lot of color blocking, like this canvas has a ton of color blocking and has round drills. So I'm gonna probably err on the side of larger sections because I, I can, the color blocking and the round drills, that is gonna be the right call for me. However, when I'm working on a square drill or you know, confetti heavy canvas, I'm gonna wanna create smaller sections. So I'll typically punch a couple of numbers and like, okay, does that make sense to divide this into like five rows or six rows? Or you know, how many columns, what makes the most sense? And then I will go from there. I do have a video. Man, how many videos am I mentioning in this video? <laughs> I'm gonna try really hard to remember to link to as many of them as I can. Uh, if I forget to link to a video and you want to see it, please leave a comment on this video and I will make sure that I add it ASAP. So um, yeah, I use washi tape and I have a video where I demo how I do it. If you, if you wanna see, um, I, no shade, I feel like I'm one of the only people that doesn't love this, but for example, like Diamond Art Club's new uh, perforated plastic covers where they have the sections measured off for you. Um, I just am completely ignoring those. I know a lot of people love them and Diamond Art Club is working on making you know, improvements to them as far as like adding the visible lines, I guess, which I am very anxious to see what those are gonna look like because I hope it's not gonna really I don't know. So I'm I'm a little high maintenance and that I like when I take a start photo that I have a relatively clean picture where you can see the image, you can see the render. I wonder if I could put a dryer sheet in here. We're going to try that. Um, but I'm afraid that when they add the lines to the perforated cover, the visible lines, that it's going to be really visible. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I, I like picking, I like, like being able to make my own size sections. And so I just ignore the perforations completely and um, just work with the size sections that I wanna work with. But um, 
again, I think I'm in the minority. I think more people are really liking the uh, the perforated covers than not. So that's fine. <laughs> I can understand it's a me problem. Um, so yeah, washi tape. Uh, question 24. Do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? Uh, not really. Um, I had dipped my toes into some other crafty hobbies a little bit during like, you know, the 2020 times when we were all trying different crafty hobbies. Um, and just nothing quite caught my interest. I do, I guess maybe puzzles. Um, and the main reason that I don't partake in puzzling nearly as much is because I just simply don't have the space for it anymore. Um, I would have to use my kitchen table and we eat at our kitchen table. There, there are no other spaces that I could work. I have tried those roll up mats or whatever. They just, they're too, it's too clunky for me. I have seen some of those like tables or coffee tables that have like a, a fold away section. Um, whereas like you open it up and there's a space where you work on your puzzle and you close it back up when you want to use like the table for something else. Um, I don't know that that's really <laughs> practical for me either, but it's a nice, it's a nice, idea uh so puzzles and i do really enjoy legos too um there's something about you know legos diamond painting puzzles they feel like kind of sister crafts to me in a way um, i know a lot of people that do diamond painting that are also into puzzling and or legos i know a lot of people that also do cross stitch that's something that i was into cross stitch a little bit when i was like a kid like in middle school high school and i did one or two small cross stitch projects as an adult but i feel like diamond painting scratches the itch uh in ways that cross stitch doesn't quite do it like i can get through a diamond painting faster um I can pick it up and put it down a little easier. I don't have to worry about like, you know, traveling threads and everything. It just is, it, it works a little bit easier for me. So I feel like that's why diamond painting is something I'm more into than cross stitch, but I've been tempted. I've really been tempted to dip my toes into cross stitch again, just because something that I do love about cross stitch is the fact that it is highly portable. It just doesn't take up anywhere near the space. Uh, there's a lot of, trash drills and there's a bunch of white ABs that's funny um like they are, are they the pale yellow ABs they must have been next to the pale yellow ABs in the strand I'll have to I'll pick those out later um but yeah I also like I'm hesitant to pick up any other hobbies at the moment because I feel like anything else would kind of take away from diamond painting time and I love being able to put the amount of time into diamond painting that I do so I don't see that really changing too terribly much um so that's my answer to that question uh the last question question 25 is who do you tag to do this video um i have said in past videos that if you have a platform like if you want to answer these questions you have a youtube channel or an instagram where you want to answer them totally consider yourself tagged um just group tag anyone any anyone goes uh as far as specific people i guess i'll mention um so I will tag, uh, let's see, the Sea of Diamonds, and let's do Shire Shenanigans. She just started a YouTube channel, and then I'm trying to think who I haven't seen do these. I'm sorry if these these people have, and I just have missed it. Um, and then Sparkling Spectrumite, Hannah. So I'll tag those three people uh, specifically. But again, if if you if you're hearing the call, you can go for it as well. So tag your hit uh thanks for listening to me answer these tag questions and for playing along if you were in the mood too i have a question for you um that i would love if you answered in the comments so someone had suggested in last i think in last week's whip and chat one or two people had suggested you should have your mom because my mom is now diamond painting and is but is still kind of a like newbie diamond painter uh you guys have suggested like oh you should have your mom answer these tag questions and kind of hear what she says and how it differs from your thoughts and opinions as a more seasoned in diamond painter and i love that concept but i wanted to check with you guys and see do you like that idea or are you like katie we've been listening to you answer these diamond painting tag questions for three weeks we're over it can you move on please that's that's fine uh but if you would like to hear my mom come on and join me for next week's whip and chat and answer some of these tag questions please let me know um because i'm sure she would be happy to and she'll be here for you know I'll be filming next week's whip and chat too. So yeah, let me know. Um, 
Now, as far as other things I wanted to chat about, so speaking of my mom and her visiting, uh, she flew in this past Tuesday and we've been having a really wonderful visit so far. Uh, whenever she comes out and it's just her, she will stay with us. Connor is having a sleepover on, he's currently on an air mattress on the floor of Adam and I's room. Um, we we have a really small space so we don't have like a dedicated guest room or anything and connor is perfectly happy to come and come and have a sleepover in adam and i's room um and so she's here which means we get to do a lot of life together that's really fun and special like getting to like you know wake up and do breakfast together getting to help put the kids to bed it's it's really nice especially with having you know my parents live across the country and that can be i'm not gonna lie that can be hard that can be emotional sometimes especially since I have kids now, it's like we've lived out here for 14, oh my gosh, 14 years. Yeah, 14 years this month. Oh my gosh. Is it right around this time where we're driving across the country? I think it, I think it might have been. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we've been out here for a while, but, and my oldest is nine. So it's just, yeah, having kids across the country from your parents is, it's not my favorite, <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a lot of wonderful things about being out here too and some uh, special things that happen with you know her coming out and staying with us for long periods of time too. So the boys are delighted to have her here. They love all the grandma time. And I felt very lucky that I just have had my mom's like emotional uh, and like mo emotional moral support, but also just like the practical support. Like I have been able to lean on her as far as helping with the kiddos, which has been really nice. Um, especially because my youngest has been in quite the like screechy big feelings stage again. <laughs> He's arguing a lot in his response when he wants to say no to something or when you suggest something that he's not happy about is he just, he will yell it. And yeah, those kids, it's what they do. But um, sometimes when it's like, I just, I would love to have a little bit of a sensory break. It's really nice to be able to, um, to you know, lean on my mom a bit, or even she took the kids to Chuck E. Cheese the other day, and I stayed home and like grabbed a nap, and you know had a little bit of just downtime, chill time at home. It was it, it's been really really nice, and also my mom is really, like I said, she's really into diamond painting now, which is a lot of fun to get to share this hobby with her. Um, I did get through this fast enough and I still have like over 15 minutes left to do in my whip and chat. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to talk and kind of shift things over so that I can put some diamonds down on this on this kit with you guys. Or actually, you know what? Because um, I'd love to be able to take a start photo with this one. What I'm going to go do instead, I will be right back. I'm going to go grab my cross stitch conversion project to just set it up real quick. We're not going to do a whole formal. These are my accessories thing. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna hop off for a second. I'll be right back with my cross stitch conversion and I'll work on that while we chat out uh, and chat about the rest of this whip and chat. So, okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back. Um, just a quick reference point. So uh, this is the chart that I'm working on. Um, and we just started the sixth panel, which started right about here in this set of torches. And working on this column here, you can kind of see the like sticky up thing. <laughs> that is, I can't quite tell. Uh, we'll be getting into here. Is that a dog? We'll see if that comes out, uh, how that comes out. But pray for me, because when I get to this like castle section with all those stones, I feel like that's gonna be a ton of confetti and be really boring. <laughs> so we'll see. But uh, yeah, so. I was just talking about my mom being here and how fun it is to get to diamond paint with her and everything. And it's funny because, yeah, she has opinions already. So she had bought a couple of um, just cheap, easy Amazon kits to work on, um, you know, that she could travel with and whatnot. And she just almost immediately was like, Haiti, you're spoiled. you spoiled me. Because I would given her uh, some like diamond art club kits and stuff. Um, when she was starting out and it was just funny to hear her her very frank thoughts about the issues of these kids that she was working with i was like i swear i didn't mean to turn you into a big a big diamond art club snob it's like there are other really quality companies out there i promise you i i just amazon is always going to be a complete and total gamble so you have to just keep that keep that in mind um but she she just started on a make market kit today because she finished that Amazon kit. Uh, she started on a make market kit that she picked up on clearance when we were shopping at Michael's. Uh, she was chuckling at me as I was trying to pick out what Halloween kits I wanted to get for that Halloween haul video because I kept going, yeah, but this one is like, this one's unique in this way. And I feel like people would really enjoy seeing this one. And oh, but this one's I really definitely see myself working on. And as much as I did not walk in there intending to buy 
seven make market diamond painting projects. I it just, I uh, decision paralysis is rough. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we're having a really nice visit. The kids are in their uh, month of sort of summer break that happens between having summer school, like Micah having summer school and Connor having like the VBS programs and stuff that he was involved in. Cause there doesn't seem to be that I have found a VBS near us that happens in August. It seems like they all kind of wrap it up in July. I know a lot of schools are going back, you know, sooner. So maybe that's kind of their reason for avoiding it. But like, I like our regular school year doesn't start up for like three more weeks and my kids are already climbing the walls. I'm like, you guys, it's only been one week. Uh, so it's it's completely fine. Uh, we are, it's a good time for my mom to be visiting. <laughs> um, we are spending a lot of time in the pool. Like our, our HOA neighborhood has a pool, which is really, really wonderful. We're making great use out of it. Connor's getting more and more confident in the water, which is great. Um, I'm really hoping that's gonna translate into him just being able to really absorb and kind of feel more comfortable in swim lessons, which we still have a couple more weeks of. Um, but just, I think working on him generally being that much more comfortable with being in the water, being going underwater and that sort of thing will hopefully only help. Uh, it's also a good way for us to beat the heat, you know, get our, get our bodies moving, but like not be, you know, sweating up a storm and just getting out of the house. There's just something about being outside of these, these walls that I think the kids really appreciate. Uh, we also have these, Chuck E. Cheese summer passes that my mom had gotten for the kids and we basically can get an hour of play out of it each day with the level of pass that we got. Literally, we can go every single day for the, the two months that it's active. So we've been spending a lot of time there uh, to the point that Connor at one point was like, um, I'm getting bored of Chuck E. Cheese. Can we not go? And I'm like, excuse you. That is that is Mr. Mr. Charles E. Cheese that you are insulting right now i was like you know next time we'll go to a different location because they're good the, the passes are good at any location and there's several you know chuck e cheese that are within reasonable driving distance to us so i think we just need to you know <laughs> take them to a different one it reminds me of the story that my mom really loves to tell of when i was i don't know how old i was i think it was five or six ish uh, and we had done a family vacation to Disney World, and I was really, we're outside the parks, so I was really enamored with these spinning signs that they had outside the parks, and when my parents were, you know, trying to get me to go into the parks, I apparently had a, a full-on meltdown and, and a temper tantrum, and my mom jokes, she's like, you are the, probably the only kid that <laughs> they've ever, these Disney cast members have ever seen that that parents had to fight to take into the parks as opposed to leaving the parks. And so I was like, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that, that, that tism was showing early, I suppose, but not that, I mean, not the kids that are neurotypical can't have, you know, temper tantrums or be upset about something, but I just was, I, I'm amused by that story. So anyway, that's what it kind of reminded me. Connor was having a tantrum about it, but just the, the humor of, Oh, you're you're bored of Chuck E. Cheese, this place where it's just full of games and you get to earn tickets for prizes, but that's fine. You're you're allowed. <laughs> so uh, we're also doing lots of like Lego projects. Michael's had a if you have a Michael's close to you and you're looking for like fun crafty stuff to do with your kids, check out your Michael's because ours had a ton of stuff on clearance for 70% off, including a lot of stuff that was uh, like crafty projects for kids. And we picked up a few different things that ended up being $2 each. It was such a good price. And so Micah and my mom have been doing these fun little craft projects uh, on and off this past week. And it's just, it's perfect. He's loving it. Connor is, is not. He, when I was asking about his his thoughts on and what he liked and didn't like about BBS uh, the last week, he's like, oh, my favorite was getting to do like the water slides and stuff. And I was like, and what was your least favorite? He's like, mm, arts and crafts. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, no, that has literally been how Connor has been since he was a young child. He has never enjoyed arts and crafty things. Um, and so it's, yeah, that's, that's his feelings on the matter to this day. So no arts and crafts for him. Uh, but sometimes Legos, sometimes Legos and swimming apparently. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what our summer has been this past week. But I, uh, as I don't know, it's like, how, how, how deep do I want to go on this? Um, I, as, as chipper as I feel like I'm sounding and as happy as I am right now getting to talk to you guys, I have been 
really struggling quite a lot in terms of my mental health still. I did finally get it together and contact my doctor. Our, you know, We had a new insurance go into effect uh, here on August 1st. And so I sent a message over to my doctor and was just like, I like, I just, I think I need a change. Like what we're, what I'm, what I'm on right now isn't working. And I feel like I might be dealing with some depression at this point. And, um, it just, it has been tough. I mean, we've had some life circumstances that to me make, make it make perfect sense that this is kind of what I'm struggling with right now, but it still, it just, it sucks. Um, a lot and it's like I don't want to keep I don't want to keep feeling this way and so yeah I'm, I'm hoping that I'll hear back from my doctor pretty quickly uh, tomorrow and that we'll just we'll see um I I you know I don't have a current official diagnosis of depression so I don't want it to me to be like oh I'm you know self-diagnosing or something but I have I have had prior diagnoses of of depression in the past and it a lot of the feelings and sort of symptoms are similar so we'll we'll see but i'm just hoping hoping i can find something that's gonna that's gonna work um and yeah so there's no there's no shame in taking you know medication if that's what your body needs sometimes it's literally just a matter of what your body chemistry is like you can think positive all you want but if your body is not producing the right chemicals like that's a chemical imbalance that's a problem it's the same it, it, it kind of it helps me to hear the really common equivalency that people draw where it's like you wouldn't tell someone that's diabetic like oh you shouldn't use insulin because you just need to like positive thought your diabetes away it's it's the same kind of idea so um, you guys know, I don't really attach any shame or stigma to mental health struggles here on my channel. That's actually a huge value that I have is to keep this a uh, protected space for that. But I try not to, I don't know. One of the things that I feel like depression does the most is it makes me feel like I am a burden to the people around me and it makes me withdraw and then I feel isolated and then I feel just, it's like a vicious cycle. Um, and it's like, I know that it would help if I talked to someone, but I just feel like I'm such a mess that I feel like it's just, it, it would be a huge burden to someone else. And also I feel like I don't have anything to give and I don't like to burden someone else with what I'm going through when I feel like I am in no position to be able to support them emotionally with whatever they're going through and everybody is going through something. So it's, yeah, it's, it is kind of thoughts like that that make me go, okay, it's, yeah, it's time to just have a chat with with the doctor and see if I can kind of get get my mind and brain back in a in a better healthier place so hopefully hopefully we'll see things turning around just in terms of the circum life circumstances you know the job situation stuff for Adam but hopefully we'll see that turn around I'm just continuing to take it one day at a time um handle what we can control and just yeah so Anyway, enough of the heavy stuff. Um, as far as what I've been reading and watching and listening to, reading-wise, still in that audiobook slump, but I did see that Carrie Can Read posted a video where she she has, she has this video series, she's done it with a lot of Sarah J. Moss's books, where she's like, I read, insert book title here, so that you don't have to, or you know something similar. And I saw that she finally did one for the most recent Crescent City book that came out a little while back now. Um, and she said that she was originally not intending to do one, but then she was baffled because she felt like she didn't hear anyone talking about this book as much as it had been super hyped. She's like, but I don't hear anyone talking about it. Like, and I was just like, I'm so baffled. None of my book friends are like talking, really talked about this book that was so hyped. So she's like, I needed to see what was going on. And so it's like a four hour video. It's not short. And, uh, but I'm kind of, even though I read House of Flame and Shadow, which is the name of the third Crescent City book, um, I'm just so interested to kind of hear her take on it and hear kind of that additional context and the thoughts of someone that isn't necessarily like a rabid SJM fan, Sarah J. Mass fan. Um, it's been really fascinating. I really enjoy her videos in general, but it was cool to see that she had put this video out. So if you were also similarly curious, go check out Carrie Can Read. And if you're, you know, just a book person in general, I love her whole vibe. It's just, I'm like, I want to be friends with her. <laughs> she seems like a, just a lot of fun. So um, speaking of four hour videos, I will, I, I won't get ahead of myself. Um, 
I'll get to that when we get to the listening part. But uh, as far as watching, I have been watching kind of bits and pieces of the Olympics. A lot of it started because it's been like pushed through my Facebook feed or social media feed. And I am just really enjoying <laughs> watching the bits and pieces that I see. Like the guy, I, I don't remember his, his I, I could never dream to pronounce his last name, but basically like the pommel horse guy, the gymnastics guy, the guy that like wears glasses, but then takes them off so that he can do his, you know, really killer pommel horse routine. Um, that has been really, really fun. And I love the kind of just the, the infectious energy that he and the like men's gymnastics team have. That's been really fun. And then of course, like Simone Biles, I am like, my brain cannot comprehend how the human body could ever like do what she does. So I just watch in awe. And then there's, you know, there's other athletes too. I'm highly, highly, highly amused. You know, the Turkey, the guy from Turkey that did like the, is YouTube going to be funny about these words, but doing like the competition for, um, where you aim and you hit a target with a thing. I just, I feel weird about saying on YouTube because I, I don't know what the platform does with certain words, but, um, how he just looked like he rolled out of bed and he's some person's like dad and just showed up and like casually got second place in this, in this competition. Uh, the memes that are coming out of that are really giving me lots of life and amusement so um and how like everyone is like yeah no that guy is totally um again what's the platform going to do in terms of what i say they just they joke about what his his background might actually be because he just looks like the type um like that he what's it what's an example no i don't know anyway so the Olympics, I guess, as far as what I've been watching and then what I've been listening to, I am still very, very much on this kind of video essay kick uh, with you know YouTube channels that mostly do video essays. My most recent creative choice is one that I mentioned earlier, the one that did the video on why you know we're so obsessed with the story of Persephone. Um, and Princess Weeks is her name. And so I've been kind of working my way through her, her backlog of videos and really enjoying her approach and her attitude about things. Um, and then how do you pronounce this one? Strange Eons. She like does a lot of kind of explorations and deep dives on like Tumblr culture of the early 2010s. And like, I spent a little bit of time on Tumblr in that time and have some like just sort of fond nostalgic associations with it. I, I watched a man who did the video. It was a whole deep dive on the John Locke conspiracy and how people thought that like the last season wasn't the real last season and it was a fake out. It was fascinating um as someone that is a Sherlock fan but wasn't like to to that extreme no judgment if you were but anyway just yeah video essays on fandom stuff have been really really fun uh but the video I was referencing earlier where I was like speaking of four hour videos I had mentioned a while back when I had watched Jenny Nicholson's four hour video where she talks about uh the failure that was the Disney World uh, Star Wars Hotel experience that video is just again for me endlessly fascinating to see and youtube pushed a video on my front on my home page earlier that was like did disney world retaliate uh against jenny nicholson for this video it was like a month old uh video but i went in and watched it and it was like oh apparently um you know, Disney has tried to file a copyright strike against Jenny Nicholson for this for this video. And I'm like, copyright strike of what exactly? And, it, you know, the speculation in this particular video was just like, it seemed like it was just Disney trying to take a jab at her. Um, but like, they weren't actually, like all it does is hold up her ad revenue from that video, which I'm sure is substantial. Um, I can't even imagine, but like not, I don't know. That's kind of wild to me. And then she says something about how apparently Universal tried to push a copyright strike against her for her her talking about Dear Evan Hansen. And I just thought, what are these? <laughs> what is happening? Um, but no, if you're like, even if you're not necessarily a Disney World or Star Wars fan, I guess maybe you kind of know, know a little bit about Star Wars. But this video was fascinating where she does a breakdown of like she went to the Star Wars hotel experience and documented it. There's a lot of video footage. Well, maybe that's what Disney was trying to call a copyright on. But um, yeah, it was, and it's got like nine and a half million views at this point. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my kind of reading, watching, listening to. You'll have to let me know if you've got anything that you have been reading or watching or listening to that you're excited to share about. 
Um, but we're about at the, yeah, we're about the end of time. As far as what I have coming up this week, uh, I'm hoping I, I should have some belated sneak peeks, first looks coming in from Diamond Art Club. Um, you know, the shipping is still delayed. It kind of is, is what it is. Uh, I have last week, well, I have the past two weeks uh, that should be coming in. Hoping, hoping sometime this week, but we'll see. Um, I would like to try to do a small shop haul. I am trying to really space those out a bit because I have not been buying as much lately uh, for financial reasons. And so I'm trying to make, make those small shop hauls last for as long as I can. Um, but I, I feel like I'm well overdue for one. It's been over a month at this point. Hold on. Is that right? I think that was wrong. That was wrong. You go here. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I have some other video ideas brewing. My mom keeps like saying things that make me go, oh, that would be an interesting video idea. I should do that. So uh, we'll see. I don't know if any of those will kind of come in, come into play or come to fruition this week, but who knows? Sometimes I get a burst of energy and motivation. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's get this done. So we'll see. Hopefully it's a good week that you guys enjoy here on my channel video wise. Um, but yeah, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, how about a cat emoji in honor of the kit that I kitted up last, Midnight Monica Neko. Here's the image one more time, by the way. I think I showed it to you when we started, but like, come on, how cute is that cat? I love it so much. This is part of, this is not the center of the cat's forehead, even though it's perfectly centered. That's like a thing on the lid of the, of the container. But yeah, a cat emoji. Let me know how you're doing. Anything, you know, exciting, fun that you've been up to this week. I always love hearing from you. Um, I'm, I know that I referenced a lot of videos that I'm going to try to remember to link to in the description. Again, if there's one that I mentioned but forgot to add a link for because I'm so incredibly forgetful, please feel free. You will not upset me or hurt my feelings if you leave a comment that's like, hey, you mentioned this video. Can you please add a link? I will be... I'll be more than happy to. So, um, you guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you aren't already subscribed, I would absolutely love to have you here. You'll see a lot of different diamond painting videos here and I hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, otherwise I'm going to let you go have a day in a week that's as amazing as you are. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.